uh, without any waste of time. Uh, my apologies for the confusion. Our meeting is supposed to start now at two. And uh, unfortunately, uh, our caucus, the ANC caucus, uh, we got a, mes a message that there is a special caucus uh, that is supposed to sit at two. And there was uh, another message that said at three and another message you are saying at four. So I then consult contacted Nelly so to say, Maybe let's uh, let's uh, inform members that uh, uh, as ANC members will be having a caucus that is starting at two, and then we'll then uh, start our meeting, our portfolio committee meeting immediately after our caucus, the ANC caucus. But uh, now uh, we have received another a communique that says our, meet, our caucus meeting will be starting at four. So let's try our utmost best that our meeting should at least by uh, 4, 4 p.m. Uh, we should be done by 4 p.m. If we're not done, we'll then uh, continue immediately after our caucus meeting that will be sitting at four especially from the ANC side. Uh, our apologies for that inconvenience. Uh, I welcome you all honorable members and I also welcome, uh, I welcome uh, all our guests. Uh, the, uh, the presidential working group and uh, the other Derko and uh, other guests that we have invited uh, so that uh, I think uh, the other commission is the one that deals with bears. Uh, I think we have invited that, that, that commission, that committee or commission so that they can give us the update on how far are they in drafting a, 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 a assisting the department in drafting the disability a, 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 a bill. But today is a follow-up meeting from the 22nd of March, 2022, when the committee considered the AU protocol to African Charter on human and people's rights of persons with disability in Africa for ratification. And then uh, what we agreed upon last week, the committee agreed in essence to the ratification by sought more information as there were issues of concern that were raised by members that related to A, 1A, the outcomes of the consultation process on the AU protocol that was conducted by the department and B, how the department would ensure compliance of treaty obligations in the absence of a disability act. Three, see how the department will, would raise awareness about the AU protocol. It is for this reason that this follow-up meeting has been scheduled. And then um, as per our agenda, for today's meeting, the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disability will commence and brief the committee on the consultation head on the AU protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's with Disability, uh, 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 Human and People Rights on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, as well as the plan to raise awareness about the said protocol and how it intends to, to, domesticate it, uh, to domesticate the protocol. Then it will be followed up uh, by a presentation by the Presidential Working Group on Disabilities to hear the com commentary on the AU protocol to the African Charter uh, as said above. 
and with uh, and uh, development related to disability bill and any other key matter matters for consideration that should be brought to uh, to the attention of the committee the presidential working group on disabilities is a key stakeholder and given that the committee has not yet engaged with the structure the committee deems it imperative that an opportunity has been uh, has been cr created in order to do this for today's meeting the committee thanks the pro the presidential working group for the work undertaken so far as reflected in the documents sent for today's meeting it is concerning again honorable members to note that in the document What is your problem, Nellis? No, nothing, Chair. Okay. I'll take apologies later. Don't worry. Okay, Chair. Yeah. Uh, honorable members, as per the document that has been submitted to the portfolio committee, uh, what is concerning is, uh, is that uh, in the document of the presidential working group uh, 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 um, on disability, there were action, uh, actionable points arising from the DG's presentation on the 25th February 2021, which uh, it stated no response from the DG regarding the work stream, advancing communication methodologies, and no clear feedback from the DG's from the DG regarding the economic empowerment of persons with disabilities, as well as for the self-representation in decision-making processes. The department would need to clarify this as the committee has uh, uh, reiterated the importance of these matters to the department. Furthermore, given the concerns raised by the committee about enforcing compliance through legal means, as well as by DERCO, Reiterating the importance thereof, the, uh, the committee deemed it fit to also have a briefing by the South African Law Reform Commission on the progress, outcomes, and an update on the issues on the issue paper related to developments of the disability bill, since they, they indicated that there will be phases. So, um, honorable members, uh, with those uh, few uh, uh, items that I have presented uh, as, the, as my opening remarks, I take it that uh, the department have, was, have listened to what I was saying and uh, will need as the portfolio committee to get clarity on the issues that we have raised. Uh, and then we move forward. And uh, I now take uh, apologies, honorable and, and members. Nelly, so can you give us apologies? Because I think I've outlined the, 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 the purpose of the meeting uh, regarding our last committee meeting decision. Uh, Nelly, so give, me, give us uh, apologies. Thank you, Chairperson, and good, good afternoon to members, to the minister, and to the, uh, the guest. I have received three apologies, Chair. One is from Honorable Chongo, who indicated that she will be at, at traveling during this time uh, of the meeting. 
and the other two apologists from Honorable Tlangwini and Honorable Sondi who have attended their organizational caucus meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, yes, uh, we know for the fact that uh, some of the members are, are traveling, hence uh, uh, we, we made it sure that we give them uh, time on what, why are we starting our meeting uh, later today, but also uh, because of the request that was made uh, by, by, by the department. So uh, let's take it, we'll, we'll take it from the um, honorable members. Can, can, can we call in the department? Good, good afternoon, Chairperson. Uh, my apology, I'm, I'm in a car and I hope um, you'll be able to hear me because the network is a challenge in this place. I'm at Cox that um, we are here um, um, looking at mainstreaming of the Eastern Seaboard development, um, uh, mainstreaming women, youth, and persons with disabilities. So this is one of the areas where we're looking at economic development of persons with disabilities. Um, the focus for today was on those women, youth, and persons with disabilities that are in businesses. However, we will have other um, uh, sessions where we're looking at others who will be um, incoming as, as persons with disabilities. I was just showing that we are doing our work. Good afternoon to all the members. Uh, I'd like to apologize for the minister. The minister had to run. She's going to the airport uh, to, to Devon. The, from here to, to, to the airport is three and a half hours. Uh, because tomorrow she has to be in parliament. So she requested me to apologize for her. Chairperson, as a department, we always listen and we we implement. And sometimes uh, by the time issues are raised, we already have implemented them. But I think um, either we're not communicating uh, properly or, or I don't know. I will request um, a, a chief director, a disability, um, Mayor Puti, uh, to, 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 to respond to the issues in terms of all the things that you've raised. And then later we will talk about the ratification because uh, we are here about the ratification of the protocol on the rights of persons with disabilities. If you allow me, Chairperson, I'll request uh, Puti to come in. Okay, Titi. Thank you. Ms. Mabelebe. Yeah, thank you, DG, and uh, oh, thank you, um, Chairperson and Honourable Members. Um, and thank you for the opportunity once more to come to the committee to present uh, ourselves in terms of the questions that were raised last week to us. And uh, to also start by, and, oh, and thank you to the Presidential Working Group members that have attended, <laughs> my apologies, to also indicate to Chairperson that we have attached, uh, sent through oh, a number of... Thank you very much, uh, sorry, Puti. Uh, the presidential working group, uh, my apologies for not acknowledging you. Uh, thank you for attending our today's meeting. You yeah, are welcome. Uh, maybe what we'll need from you is to open up your, your, your cameras so that we know who are we talking to. My apologies, I'm using my iPad. Uh, so I'm in Cape Town and, uh, you know, it's difficult sometimes when I'm using my iPad, the, the network problem uh, is too much here in Cape Town. Okay, thank you very much. Over to you, Puti. Thank you, Chair. We are all welcome. Thank you, Chair. Um, with regard to the outcomes of the consultation, Chairperson, we attached a, a number of documents, starting with the um, consultations that we held with the disability sector uh, from 2016. Uh, with regard to the number of follow-up consultations, we also went further to attach uh, the minutes of the National Disability Rights Machinery, 
where we continued to consult on uh, the legislative and policy environment, which included the frameworks that we have since brought to the portfolio committee and also the AU protocol. But of late, the, the last consultation that we then had with the presidential working group was on this last month um, in March. Uh, 2022, where we then tied down issues around the legislative protocol, uh, the, no, sorry, the AU protocol, uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, we progress smoothly uh, after we receive the date for to present to the portfolio committee. So we have attached all the documents that we 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 that proved that was meant to provide proof that we have indeed uh, consulted uh, with the disability sector and the. And, and, and the presidential working group uh, uh, on its own. And also we further attached the communication plan, <clears throat> which is the awareness raising plan. Uh, honorable members and chair, you remember that in the previous, uh, when I was presenting the AU protocol, I indicated that uh, this year, in actual fact, one of our <clears throat> uh, 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 key indicators on our, our, our annual performance plan is that we're going to create more and more awareness. And the awareness has got to do with all uh, legislative instruments that we have to bring them to the attention of individuals, of, of, of persons with disabilities, with and, and for them. So we, we, we have attached the, the draft uh, awareness plan which uh, early in April, as per agreement with the presidential working group, amongst other things that we're going to be discussing as the plan for 2022-23 financial year, we agreed that we will be going into a planning session where we'll then um, uh, 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 ensure that that particular awareness plan is approved by all and we're able in partnership to then create awareness on all the legislative instruments that are there, including the AU protocol. Um, on the issue of ensuring compliance, Chairperson, uh, we further attached the the, the annual compliance uh, matrix uh, and, and reports in terms of how we monitor compliance of the white paper. And we showed that what, what is contained in the AU protocol also finds is found and reflection into the current instruments that we have. So we'll just have to look again into the other matters that may need to then be uh, uh, aligned uh, uh, once the, the ratification is done, post-ratification, so that the monitoring tool that we are using uh, is, uh, is able to fulfill our monitoring role uh, properly and departments are able to, 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 to report on how far, how they are progressing on implementation. And I just want to indicate, uh, Chairperson, that um, uh, with reference to the matters that Chairperson raised around the advancing of the communication methodology, economic empowerment, and self-representation uh, in the minutes of 25 February 2021, it is true. Those are minutes of meetings. Uh, they were reflected in the meeting that because we were taking stock and it was in our planning session with the presidential working group where we are taking stock in line with the different work streams and the work of the work streams to say what has been done, how far have we progressed in terms of uh, the matters. So we found that in terms of um, uh, advancing communication methodology one and uh, issues of economic empowerment and self-representation were lagging behind and we're not limited to those three there's quite a number of them where we are we were lagging behind but there has been work in progress uh, including also now as 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 as, as we're going into 2022-23 you will see chair that uh, part of the a, a, a plan that we have even in our ops plan is to actually have an economic uh, empowerment uh, summit for persons with disabilities, specifically for persons with disabilities. But there has been work in progress throughout last year in terms of creating awareness in terms of the different offtake packages, grants that the, the economic cluster departments have developed specifically for persons with disabilities. But we still have matters that we are finding uh, as challenges. 
uh, for persons with disabilities to participate in the mainstream economy. And that's what we want to take into the summit, uh, just as we did with the basic education summit, inclusive education summit that we held in November. We take in the very same direction where we took stock of what the white paper was saying, but then also wanting to advance uh, the, the, the agenda of inclusive education with the Department of Basic Education. And, and the self-representation framework uh, uh, chairperson, we know that it's a uh, it has been approved. We sent it to, we also came to portfolio committee and presented it. And uh, the self-representation workshop is just now awaiting cabinet approval. Other than that, it was widely consulted. Uh, the authors are here in this meeting, including the presidential working group. We are just awaiting for that so that we can begin to also ensure compliance of, of, of uh, and ensure that uh, uh, it's been considered and implemented effectively. Once it's, it's approved by cabinet, we gazette it. And then that's where the awareness raising is because it starts with the duty bearers as, as government departments and those in the private sector knowing what are the implications of them not uh, implementing the frameworks that we that that we have uh, would have gazetted and finalized with. And that is why 2022-23 is all about awareness. It's about awareness in depth but also capacity building, capacitating even those that are supposed to implement, especially them, to ensure that indeed they implement accordingly. Uh, Chair, let me pause there. Uh, I think I've covered all the areas that uh, we were requested to look at. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Puti, if I may ask, um, are you aware that on the 10th of March, 2016, there was a list of issues that was raised during the presidential meeting, presidential, uh, presidential meeting. Are you aware yes. of that? Yes, Chair. Uh, how far We're aware are you, that, sorry? How far are you with regards to the, all those issues that were, were raised? Um, we have not, we have progressed, but we have not progressed. I don't want to say that we are doing well. Um, with regard to the protocol, I know that there were bones of contention regarding issues around polyandry and all of that. And, and I think the, also the, the presidential working group will, will, will speak to that uh, because it was issues that were bones of contention and they were negotiated and they were consulted on until the, it was, they reached agreement. Also issues of the LGBTQIA uh, and so forth, yeah. Um, maybe uh, the last, uh, uh, the other one, uh, the other protocol that uh, we have delayed as the department, I think that one is also, uh, the DG can respond to that one, the SADC protocol regarding child marriages. How far are you as the department? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, Chair, in terms of the presidential uh, uh, working group meet, we are following up because some most of the things that need to be implemented, as um, 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 uh, Ms. Mabelebele had indicated earlier on, that even the issue of access to education was one of the uh, uh, outcomes from the presidential working group. So we're working on that. And on the issue of the protocol, uh, Chairperson, we met again. I remember I reported to you with um, a Department of um, Cooperative Governance. Um, I and it was that um, international relations and cooperative governance. I thought we we had an understanding because the acting director general, as I was presenting, he was agreeing with me. But they went back and wrote again to us that they stand by their. Uh, uh, um, by their um, conviction, uh, they are not supporting. But as I said, even the last time, I think the challenge here, a, a, a chairperson, is that DECO, which is supposed to be understanding what ratification is all about, doesn't understand what ratification is all about because ratification, you ratify as you are, as your country is, with the laws that you have, then you domesticate. And as you domesticate, it means you amend legislation, you do whatever, but also the Department of uh, 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 Home Affairs, they, they presented even to the portfolio committee that the, the policy has been approved by government, which is now amending legislation. That doesn't mean that we have to wait for four years or whatever. 
and you had the 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 the, the special advice who attended the last time when we met you were saying there's no legislation however when i say uh, you you don't domesticate before you ratify and then she says no i was i was just raising an issue that there's no legislation unfortunately deco I, I i don't want to say a lot because they are my colleagues but i think they they lack understanding of what ratification is all about and uh, domestication. They say uh, because there's conflict, uh, the, the, the Marriage Act co will conflict with uh, 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 the, the, the protocol, so they won't ratify. But I indicated that already the, that Marriage Act is in conflict with the laws in South Africa. And if South Africans want to uh, 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 litigate, they'll start with the laws that we have. They don't need a, 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 an instrument. And, Everybody knows that an instrument doesn't apply until you have ratified. So that is the challenge we have. They, 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 they say they're not going to change their stance. Now it's up to the portfolio committee uh, for them to choose what we're going to do. The portfolio committee can decide that we're going to ratify and South Africa must amend its laws as Home Affairs is already ratifying. There is no instrument that has been signed when we have the best law. The instrument says you, you ratify, and that's why they say domesticate. Domestication, they know that it might take a year, it might take two years, it might take 15 years. There are many laws that, uh, uh, instruments that we've ratified 15 years after we've not yet uh, 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 domesticated because of whatever reason. And it's not South Africa only, it's many countries. Litigation, as I've indicated, Chairperson, the Sexual Offenses Act, which takes precedence if there's any uh, law that contradicts it, says uh, 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 um, sex with a child below 16 years is a statutory offense. It doesn't matter whether the child is consented or not. It doesn't matter whether the parents or the Minister of Home Affairs has consented. If they're involved in that it's a criminal offense, already there's a conflict uh, with our laws. If anybody wants to litigate, they can litigate. So, Chairperson, I don't know, we are waiting for the Portfolio Committee to advise us because Home Affairs, they've indicated that they will not. No, sorry, a, a, a DECO have indicated that they stand by their a, a, a opinion that we can't ratify. And if there's one thing that as a country, Chairperson, we are being called when we go to international fora, more especially the AU, we are being called to remove the reservations that we've made in the, in the, uh, um, the, the women's protocol. Always when we attend, we are called that we must remove. And as a, as a department, I don't see any reason. And as a department, I say, we are not going to ratify with a reservation. We would rather sit and not ratify because there's no need for us to reserve anything. We can't say as a country that promotes the rights of children and say we're, we, 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 we're reserving that men can marry children at 12 years or, or 14 years. What country is that? I'm sorry, Chairperson, but it's just that we can't, rati we can't ratify with a reservation. It's either we don't ratify if we're not going to ratify, but a reservation we're not going to enter. I'm sorry, Chairperson, bear with me. Um, um, maybe because uh, 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 DG, yeah, now uh, it's an, it, it has got a lot of things now, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that protocol. But, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, that there's a need, DJ, that when you have all these challenges, you, you communicate with, with, with my office as soon as possible, because I, we don't want uh, that those protocols be delayed. And then at the end of the day, it will look like uh, it's us as the portfolio committee who's delaying things. And 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 the, and uh, or be pushed at the eleventh hour. That uh, there is this thing uh, that needs to to be signed off by the president, and uh, you are late. When I think it, it's, it's it looks clumsy. So um, this protocol was uh, presented to the portfolio committee last year. And uh, those, there were issues that were raised in the portfolio committee. And uh, I have spoken to you on which approach can you use and uh, so that you can fast track and uh, 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 that protocol. 
and uh, up until today, do you see today, I think is the 29th of March, 2022. And uh, this protocol has been outstanding for, for a long time. And, 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 and I, I have a problem with it. I'm not sure how are we going to deal with it as the portfolio committee, because you see, we haven't presented it to us formally. Uh, it's, you are responding to the questions that I'm raising now as the chair on behalf of the committee. So um, maybe let's, let's put it aside for now. And then uh, you will give us a, a, a formal presentation uh, 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 so that we see as the portfolio committee will have a joint portfolio, portfolio committee with the uh, uh, COCTA so that we, we are able to move with regards to that protocol. Because you see, if a, a, a departments are not agreeing with each other, then it becomes a problem for us. And uh, 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 I think uh, that one is a problem. But I'm sure, honorable members, let's focus to... Chair, maybe before... I see the end of honorable... Chair, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna note hands of honorable members. Uh, uh, DG, I will allow you to speak, then I will take hands from honorable members. Thank you. We've escalated. And Masiko, and Honorable Sharif, I, I noted you. Okay, I was saying we, we have uh, escalated it to the presidency because it is the president who will be embarrassed when he attends the heads of of, of states meeting and to find that it's only South Africa which has not ratified. So, but I agree with what you are saying that we need to write to you uh, uh, formally to indicate that we have reached a deadlock with DECO. Okay, I see there's a hand, there's a hand for Tanya Prinslow. Oh, Tanya. Good afternoon, honorable members. Uh, I'm from the South African Law Reform Commission. We have one of our commissioners, Advocate John Ball, in the meeting as well. He has to leave for another engagement at three o'clock. And I was wondering if we could maybe just accommodate our uh, presentation so he could uh, have a, a, the time needed to get to that engagement. Thank you. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Uh, 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 but Tanya, we gave you uh, enough time. But yes. Uh, because, uh, you know, when people come to meetings and they are having other engagements, it becomes a problem for us. Because, you see, when you present a report to the portfolio committee, honorable members should engage with whatever you're going to present. So you can't just present a report and leave the meeting. You present okay. a report and honorable members will want to, to engage you. Yes, but I was so Sorry, I will still be in the meeting. Uh, the commissioner just needs to do an introduction and uh, acknowledge that uh, from his part that he's here for the, from the commission. No, it's fine. Let me take the two hands. Uh, uh, I'll allow her. Let me give uh, the two honorable members uh, an opportunity to speak first. Honorable Masiko and uh, uh, Sharif. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Greetings to your good self as well as honorable members on the platform and all members present. Chair, I, I think I, I have been covered by you in terms of uh, uh, probably receiving the full report from the DG. My concern, however, Chair, is, is, is what you have raised in relation to us as parliament now becoming a mediator between government departments who are not agreeing. I do have a concern in relation to that. We cannot play as, as, as this portfolio committee uh, become AMA referees uh, when two government departments are not, are not agreeing. Um, the reason, Chair, part of the reason why we did not adopt the protocol in December was because of the very same reason, the deadlock. So ours is not to resolve the deadlock. Ours is to ensure because our government, chairperson, is one. We have one government. We are not having different 
eh, 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 governments eh, who are now going to clash over an issue and not agree. I'm happy that the DG has raised the fact that the matter has been escalated to a level of the presidency. We are not going to come here, Chairperson, and, and, and try and mediate and, and, and pick sides between two government departments or three government departments that are not agreeing on a matter. Because we might as well, as the Portfolio Committee for Women, take sides and agree with the portfolio co and, and agree with the Department of Women. And then later on, we'll find that, no, we were advised by another department that this is not correct. Um, it, it, it's a request and a humble request for that matter for e e e e e e e e government way to administration chairperson to deal with this matter and bring it a, a having been able to agree and find each other and sing from one hymn, hymn book. It's going to place us in a very difficult corner to take sides. And I don't think we should allow it a, 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 or this portfolio committee to be expected chairperson to take sides and mediate between government departments that are not agreeing. We have one government, they must speak to each other, they must find each other, and then they must bring us a document that uh, the entire government of South Africa is agreeing on and has total and absolute ownership of that. So we'll request for that day when, when, when the department comes back to report on the SADC protocol, not to hear Chairperson, because we are, we are basically we are back where we, we, we had left in, in December. The reason why we weren't able to adopt was because of this very same reason. So if there's a deadlock, we can't be expected to resolve that deadlock as parliament. It's not our responsibility. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Masiko. I think I agree with you 100%. Honorable Sharif. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Good afternoon to yourself. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, let me say I agree with both you, Chair, and Honorable Masiko, but I must say I appreciate the passion from the DG. Um, it's good to see officials feeling as, feeling as passionate as we are about such issues. Chair, a couple of things. I want to move a little bit away from the, the politics in inverted commas around all of this in departments and speak directly to the reports that were sent, <clears throat> excuse me, by the department. Chair, the first one is the awareness raising plan. I have a massive issue with it because it only speaks about phases, but it doesn't give specific timelines. So it's just basically a plan around it that goes with um, the phases and the operational planning, but there is no real sort of timelines that we can, we can do oversight on and hold departments accountable. The second one is the draft consultation plan, Chair. I, I, I don't know if I should feel um, insulted um, as a member of this portfolio committee for receiving draft plans that says that, uh, over, that the, the consultation will happen um, throughout the whole of March 2022, um, but there's no real information of which organizations were invited, which organizations were consulted. And this is what we as the committee asked for last week um, to get all this information. And so we are left with <clears throat> broad dates that don't give us any real information on who the department has 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 spoken to who they've consulted with specifically in the civil organization in the tertiary organizations as well as the provincial disability rights machinery next chair is the compliance matrix it's super broad super super broad um, and it makes it super difficult to be able again to do our oversight so you know, I just wanted to speak on these reports. We've asked for them. We've asked um, for specific information, and we just have not received it, Chair. And this is a problem, and perhaps this links to the issue yourself and Honorable Ms. Masiko was talking about, but, you know, we need more information, and this is the information we asked for, and I don't feel like it's been fulfilled. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sharif. Uh, I, you know, uh, you are correct. Uh, some of the issues that uh, was presented by Ms. Putti, you know, I didn't want to make comments. But thanks for raising the issues that were a concern for me. Babu Ngobo? 
Thank you, Chairperson, and good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, so, Chairperson, I've been covered by Honorable Nesli, but just to add one item, we, as the Portfolio Committee, we also needed more information on the National Disability Rights Coordinating Mechanism. So we wanted to know what does this mechanism entail and how, how will this mechanism ensure that there's a domestic, domestication of the of the protocol, thanks. Okay. Thank you, Babu Ngobo. You know, uh, I think uh, the department has uh, noted the concerns that you have raised, uh, honorable members. But uh, uh, let me allow the Law Reform Commission to make a presentation. And thereafter, their presentation, we can go back to the department to respond to the issues that you have raised. Um, uh, Law Reform Commission. Maybe I can come in here before. My name is Johan de Waal. Um, I'm a commissioner okay. on the <clears throat> Law Reform Commission since um, 2018. Okay. I must just perhaps clarify that uh, Except for one, the members of the commission are are in, not not employed by the state. And, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so we um, we most of us are in the private sector, and uh, I'm afraid that we've got to fit in a meeting like this in and amongst our other duties. Um, oh. And we, we, we don't get remunerated for, for attending them. So I'm very sorry. I was going to stay. There was a further misunderstanding in the sense that we thought that the presentation is going to be this morning. Um, and, and then it was uh, moved to this afternoon. But I must just say that I am the co-project leader of Project 148, which relates to the domestication of the UN Convention on People with Disabilities and the Rights of Those People, together with Professor Rieta Maintis, who unfortunately can't be there, uh, who will be making the presentation is the researcher, the person responsible for drafting this report and ultimately will be responsible also for the legislation flowing from it, um, Ms. Tanya Prinsluer, and also together with her, is uh, Ms. Uh, Deline Clark from the Law Commission, who is the mentor of Ms. Prince Lua. Um, I don't think I see the name of Mr. Nelson Matibe on this list. I did look earlier. He's, of course, the administrative head of the Law Reform Commission and uh, the person that's uh, responsible overall for all of that. So, um, I am going to stay with you for as long as possible and to listen to the presentation uh, by Ms. Prince Lua, but I might have to leave at some point and I offer my, my apologies for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tivan. Thank you. Uh, who's going to present is who? It's Ms. Uh, it be, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. May I proceed? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, after, uh, honorable members. This is a presentation to the Portfolio Committee by the South African Law Reform Commission. Now, the purpose of the presentation is to inform the Portfolio Committee of the composition and working processes of the Law Reform Commission in order to indicate the processes followed to arrive at a solution and why public consultation is of utmost importance. And it's also to put the development of Project 148 in place with the described processes. The content of the presentation will uh, uh, go as follows. We will discuss the processes of the commission, the history of the investigation, the issue paper published, a broad overview, then the progress on the investigation in terms of the workshops held, the number of comments received from the workshops, then the overview of what a convention is about, the UNCRPD, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, what a convention seeks to achieve and what our investigation seeks to achieve. 
I will raise the important points in the issue paper and I will briefly discuss the development of the discussion paper. What I've also now noticed is that uh, the AU protocol might then influence the drafting of a bill. We just need to confirm or con uh, consult with the uh, Department of Women, Youth, Persons with Disabilities on that matter. Okay, let's start. Um, the Commission was established by the South African Law Reform Commission Act 19 of 1973. We do research to determine authoritatively the existing legal position and to identify shortcomings. We do consultation with the researcher, the project leader, advisory committee, if one exists, the general public, stakeholders, and persons with particular knowledge about the matter under investigation. We do comparative studies. And then uh, the issue paper in this case, and, oh no, sorry, the issue paper or the discussion paper is then submitted to the Phil Commission for its consideration and approval. Only then can publication take place. The next step would be a report, which then contained law reform proposals. The, the department responsible for the legislation, for, as in this case, the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, will then take the proposal through Parliament. I'm just going to talk a bit about the advisory committee. Now, the Commission institutes advisory committees that consist of experts to assist the investigations and to advise, advise the Commission where necessary. They are established in terms of Section 7A1B. Um, the Commission is established by, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the committee is established by the Commission. The Commission recommends the appointment uh, of the persons to the Minister, and the Minister then decides whether they are suitable. Current Advisory Committee for Project 148, uh, like Advocate Deval mentioned, it is him and Advocate Mankies. We also have Professor C. Nguena, Dr. Grobla de Plessy, Mr. Strassheim, Ms. Franz Soulet, Mr. A.K. Dube, and Mr. B. Palime, which is from the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. I've spoken about our processes. Uh, just to recap, we have a pre-investigation, which is the first step in the process. This is undertaken to decide on the merits of the investigation. So if it gets approved by the commission, then the, the program uh, the um, subject, the uh, investigation, gets placed on the research program of the Commission. Once that is done, we do an issue paper as the first stage in the investigation of the problem. This issue paper sets out the current problems and asks for submission from the public on what needs to be done. Distribution is as wide as possible. Next step is the discussion paper and report. That a discussion, discussion paper sets out the existing problems and suggest possible solutions in a way of preliminary recommendations. It could contain draft legislation. Consultations again takes place with the public for further buy-in and development. Once that has taken place, we've got all, once we've got all the input from the public on the discussion paper, we develop a report. Uh, the submissions from the public are consolidated, evaluated, and where appropriate incorporated into the final recommendations and it could be a bill, a draft bill. The report is then forwarded to the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services for transmission to the, in this case, the Department of Women, Youth, Persons with Disabilities. The progress of the investigation, uh, I'm gonna talk about that a, bit, that a bit. Now the request for investigation was received in May, 2018. We did a pre-investigation, the pre-investigation was approved and it was placed, the investigation was placed on the research program in 2019. Advisory committee was appointed by the minister in September 2020, and then the issue paper served before the commission in December 2020. The issue paper was approved by the commission for publication, and it was published in March 2021. Consultative workshops were held on the dates that I've uh, indicated there. It's about 10 workshops that were held. We received a number of comments, uh, 38 persons or organization responded, and we received about 400 pages of input. I'm going to talk now about a bit about what the UNCRPD is about, what it seeks to achieve. Uh, it's a legally binding instrument. It's one of the nine uh, UN treaties, nine core human rights UN treaties. 
It sets out the rights of persons with disabilities and how it is to be protected. Oh. Um, oh, my battery is lining low. I'm just going to connect in the, what's it called? The, okay, I'm just going to connect the adapter, please. Just bear with me. It's okay. If I can continue, the UNCRPD then sets out the obligations state parties has to take to promote, protect, and ensure the rights of persons with disabilities. Now, the definition of disability, um, yeah, there's it's a whether you can define it or not is a, a point for discussion. But the UNCRPD sees disability as an evolving concept, and um, it adheres to the social model of disability. This, okay, next slide would be then, uh, the UNCRPD also has an op optional protocol. South Africa also signed this protocol or ratified this protocol. Both the UNCRPD and the protocol has been uh, ratified, but it's not been incorporated into South African law. And what is important is that no reservations has been made to the UNCRPD. Reservations would be where uh, a country's law does not quite match a treaty or a convention. And then you say, OK, we're not going to do that part of the, uh, we, we exclude that part of the convention for South Africa. Uh, no such reservations has been made for um, the, the UNCRPD. Just a quote from Gwenya and Albertine in their article, Special Issue on Disability Introduction. The CRPD is animated by substantive and transformative equality. It seeks to overcome the legacy of systemic disability-related inequality and discrimination through recognizing the diversity of humankind. It creates a new version of disability that finds concrete expression in a duty to accommodate difference under conditions of equality and human dignity. For these reasons, the CRPD now serves as a complementary reference point for any judicial discourse at the intersection between disability and equality. It identifies issues of reasonable accommodation and systemic, systemic exclusion of persons with disabilities on the grounds of socioeconomic rights. And then uh, both these authors opine that society is structured around the idea of able-bodiedness. Just, just to give you an overall idea of the, the social intent or the um, equity intent of the uh, UNCRPD. Some of the state obligations that uh, the UNCRPD place on states are to adopt legislation and administrative measures to promote the human rights of persons with disabilities, adopt legislative and other measures to abolish discrimination and promote and protect the rights of persons with disabilities in all policies and programs, and to stop any practice that breach the rights of persons with disabilities. Some uh, further uh, obligations are to protect. States have to prevent violations of rights by third parties and to fulfill, to undertake legislative, administrative, budgetary, judicial, and other actions to enable disabled persons. And then it also should promote through awareness raising uh, and protect through adopted legislation and policies that create rights for disabled persons and to ensure rights by ensuring accessibility. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about the issue paper. The content dealt with the history of the UNCRPD, how it came about over a couple of decades. It is very much into the social model of disability, uh, which is more about the interaction of the person with disabilities with the environment instead of seeing the person with disabilities as a patient. Uh, it talks about the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities, which is the cornerstone of any further actions on disability in South Africa. It looked at the existing measures in South Africa. It dealt with discrimination um, measures in the constitution in Papuda and in definitions of disability. It also dealt with universal design, reasonable accommodation, and then the need for legislation. Um, the South Africa has uh, to report on the, under the nine UN, UN uh, human rights treaties to the different bodies established by those treaties. Now, once a report has been done, 
uh, each body of each treaty issue concluding observations. A country has to adhere to those observations. Um, the observations are basically guidelines as to how a country can better, better adhere to the provisions of the treaty. Then we also have section 2314 of the constitution, which says that um, a convention must be, uh, can only be domesticated once it is law um, in South Africa. Like I've indicated, we look at foreign jurisdictions, we look at the African and Western countries, and then we looked at possible solutions on how a ball could look. So uh, it would then seem that uh, because we have ratified, because there's a provision in the constitution in 231 saying it's only law in South Africa once it's um, once it's um, put in, once it's in act, it would seem that a standalone bill would be possible. Uh, this, these slides are just a, a, a further discussion on what the content was of the issue paper. I'm not going to go into that. Then um, basically, it, uh, the question is about the creation of a definition of disability, because if you have disability, you can define what discrimination, if you have a definition of discrimination, who is the beneficiaries of this uh, definition, then you can define what and what is discrimination and who is discriminated against. So um, disability is relevant in legal terms in relation to discrimination and affirmative action and allocation of benefits. Also important is reasonable accommodation to correct an unequal playing field. And it is the measure to eradicate environmental barriers that disable a person with disabilities. Like I said, we've discussed the discrimination provisions in of South Africa in the issue paper. Other issues that was addressed was the issue of crimes and culpability. The existing acts was identified, foreign international law benchmarking was done, and there was possible solutions discussed. Now, we asked a number of questions from the public to ascertain uh, what we actually need to do. The first was a couple of questions relating to the need for an act, the scope for an act and the type of act, and then the existing acts uh, that's in South Africa. So from this, we wanted to know what we need to do. Is there a need for an act? What the act should entail and what the structure of the act should be? Other questions was relating to criminal and civil law, harmful practices, specific criminal offenses. So how does uh, any of these relate to the position of a person with disability? We asked on the question on the white paper was how would the INDS, um, the first issue, first paper in 1997, I can't remember the exact name of that acronym now, uh, how would that relate to the white paper? As the white paper says, it does not uh, exclude any other existing policies. We need to ask about barriers to equal dignity, treatment, and participation. We ask about deinstitutionalization and incarcerated persons with disabilities. We ask about insurance, pensions, workman's compensation, and social grants. We talked about gender-based violence, and then we wanted to know how foreign law and international law could guide the domestication. We talked about security services and how they interact with persons with disabilities. And we also talked about, asked questions about asylums and refugees. Other questions was elder abuse, um, issue of euthanasia, treatment of persons in prisons, of mentally ill persons in prisons, abortion of a, feature, of a fetus in vitro, if the fetus have a disability. Then uh, I need to make a correction at number five. You don't suffer from Down syndrome. That is a, a big mistake I made there, I apologize. Um, the other question, the question related to intellectually disabled children uh, persons with head injuries and persons with Down syndromes uh, in terms of giving evidence. Uh, liability for omissions, if you're dealing with vulnerable persons and elderly vulnerable persons. Uh, so can you be civil, uh, civil and criminally be held liable if you are vulnerable? Insurance discriminations issues, the whole life is to do many debacle and any offensive languages. Like I said, we've discussed the white paper. It is, does not replace any existing policy and it moves towards the social model. Uh, we've discussed the nine strategic pillars the white paper is built on. It's about removing barriers to access and participation, protecting the rights of persons at risk of compounded marginalization, 
supporting sustainable integrated community life, promoting and supporting the empowerment of children, women, youth, and persons with disabilities, reducing economic vulnerability and releasing human capital, strengthening the representative voice of persons with disabilities, building a disability equitable state machinery, promoting international cooperation and monitoring and evaluation. You will recall that I've referred to the United Nations um, committees. Now, the committee for, the, for, for this treaty issued soft law. Now, this, this soft law means that it's not, it's not binding, but you have to follow it in terms of how to implement the treaty. Now, they've uh, implemented seven, seven general comments. Um, the comments um, center on equal recognition before the law, accessibility, the rights of women and girls with disabilities, the right to inclusive education, living independently and being included in the community, equality and non-discrimination and the participation of persons with disabilities, including children with disabilities, through their representative organizations in the implementation and monitoring of the convention. A bit of progressive and immediate realization. Um, civil rights, like your right to vote, have to be immediately implemented and then social and cultural rights can be progressively implemented within stated timeframes. Um, the investigation then seeks to achieve how to integrate the, South Af uh, the CR CRPD into South African law, that is through the concept of equality. The question, as I've mentioned, is who gets rights under the disability provisions to protect them against discrimination? What would the discrimination look like? Like I said, you have to look at the concluding observations and then the, which was issued under the, the report South Africa did to the committee. Um, the CRPD, the, the rights in the CRPD and the seven general comments has to be implemented. Disabled peace persons have these rights that needs to be put into an act of parliament if to, put, to give the push to recognize the equality provisions. Um, the South African legislation, common law, case law, and policies and operation in South Africa uh, in relation to protection of persons with disabilities has been identified. It now needs to be evaluated against the input received compared with the provision, UNCRPD provisions, the existing general comments and the statements delivered by the committee to get to a right that is that one can put into an act of parliament. Like I said, benchmarking in other divisions, we looked at Malawi, Uganda, Kenya, the USA, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, and Australia. Uh, international law, the protocol on the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, and then um, the Pan-African Model Law uh, is used for informational purposes. Obviously, this now has to be discussed to see whether those provisions um, of the protocol should also be incorporated into a bill. And uh, possible solutions, um, it would seem like a broad policy framework for addressing disability issues, uh, an act or bill to create a broad policy framework for addressing disability issues, um, which establish a number of bodies at national state level, seems to be needed. The prevention and early detection of disability equality in education and employment, included, including affirmative action and social security is needed. Uh, separate specific legislation might be needed to address these areas and all abusive languages should be er eradicated from the statute book. So core requirements of the legislation according to the training guide and um, another resource that I can't remember now, um, refer, you should refer to the convention and uh, important terms like discrimination on the grounds of disability, reasonable accommodation. It should prohibit all discrimination in all areas mentioned in the convention. Identify all duty bearers at all government levels, including third parties. And confer rights on individuals and groups to be able to lodge complaints on a basis of discrimination, investigate these claims and have access to remedies. It further should provide for independent agencies to hear allegations in terms of systemic discrimination and individual allegations, investigate and report on the allegation, and then seek systemic remedies and change. This is where the South African Human Rights Commission uh, might play a role. 
then it should reflect the social model of disability and include the minimum disability set, as set out in the CRPD. That's all the rights uh, that, that the convention uh, afford to persons with disabilities. Special, it could contain special reasonable accommodation measures to achieve equality. What is important is if you deny reasonable accommodation, it's an act of discrimination. And then it could include awareness raising um, and then reporting obligations. And it should protect against public and private entities uh, that discriminate. You recall that I refer to section 231 of the constitution. Um, it states that a treaty has to be incorporated by an act of parliament for it to have legal status in national law. Now, the UNCRPD will then be domesticated through an act, which provisions have to be fleshed out uh, in terms of South African equality law. Important issues that was raised that it's topical at the moment is issues of gender-based violence, inclusive education, accessibility to the physical and informational environment, access to justice from the reporting of a crime up to the finalization, finalization of the court case, social assistance uh, grants and access to equi equitable pension and insurance projects, hate speech and hate crimes, copyright, the life is the mini and deinstitutionalization, free and fair consent to medical treatment, then mental capacity in terms of criminal law and supportive decision-making measures, mental health, and then intersectionality and the need for amendment acts. Now, as you will see from the presentation, all these articles have tentacles everywhere. You can't deal with one article specifically. You have to look, for example, art, um, article 12. You have to look in terms of the rest of the articles of the convention, what does it say? You, you can, it's, a, it's an intertwined web that you have to be aware of. Now, in terms of a little bit of progress, um, the discussion paper is in the process of being developed. It tentatively looks at a definition of disability and what will constitute discrimination, what rights are applicable, what bodies needs to be established, what are the remedies. Now, this can change depending on the advisory committee view. Meetings with the advisory committee are scheduled for the advice on the content, and it is intended that a discussion paper will be published in May 2022. I thank you. That concludes you. my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Prinslow, for the presentation. And uh, I can see that you have done most of the work, you know, um, in your consultation uh, with regards to the questions that uh, we have raised in your document, I can see that we have done most of the work. In fact, uh, it's going to be easy now for the department to take the process forward. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was reading, I read the document and uh, uh, even what we are presenting now, I was, uh, I was reading through what you are presenting. And uh, um, my, my only worry is that uh, I, we, we, you did not give us the response that you got from uh, the, your consultations. Can you respond to that? Yes, uh, the response from the consultations, like I said, it's about 400 pages of input. Um, and um, the response will only be available once we have uh, done the draft uh, discussion paper and it's approved by the, um, by the committee. So uh, in terms of discussing each and every uh, response that we've received now, um, can it's not suitable for this forum. It can only be done once the uh, discussion paper has been published and then we can entertain the different um, opinions and different uh, reasons why an article as is it is. Thank you. Oh, okay, um, I, I hear you, uh, Tanya. But uh, are there issues that we want uh, you want us as the committee to consider? No, at the moment everything um, will be included in the discussion paper. Any problems would be put to the public, um, and then all the to the public, to the different departments, to the Department of Women Youth and children, people with disabilities, and then we will do a combination of all that. So at this moment, um, there isn't any burning issues that we need assistance with. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, what phase are we now? We're now in the drafting of the discussion paper phase. So like I said, it's intent to be published in May 2022 after we have scheduled one, two, three, four, five advisory committee um, meetings for to discuss the paper properly and get it print ready. And then we uh, it will be submitted to the committee after the commission. And if they approve, it will be published, 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 publicized, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Benny from the department is uh, sitting in your committee, Mas. Yes. So I I take it that uh, the department, uh, uh, I'm sure they have an idea where to start so far because you have done most of the work. But thank you very much uh, for your presentation, uh, uh, Ms. Prinslow. Uh, thank you. Your, your commission has done a lot of work. Now I can confidently say uh, there is something that uh, there's work that is, is uh, happening there. And uh, uh, soon we'll be hearing from the department on, on, on when uh, are they coming to present uh, the bill to parliament because uh, this is our priority as the portfolio committee. And if I may just, uh, sorry. Yeah, you can if speak might... Tanya. If I may just interject here, we're at the discussion paper phase now. So once it's published, we're going for a, a huge round of public consultations. Once we get, uh, get that information, we will again consolidate it and then see what the final project would, final project would, final project would be. So we, what we're doing then is a, a final draft bill will then be presented via our minister to the department. So that's the next, next step after the discussion paper. Okay. No, thank you very much. At least you have given us the, your time frame for me. It's fine. Thank you. Yeah. We are looking forward uh, to all that information uh, and the time frame that you have given us as the portfolio committee. But maybe before, let me not close out honorable members. Let me take hands from honorable members. I see the end of DG is up. I don't know whether DG uh, it was at that time. No, no, no. I wanted to clarify that May is for the release of the discussion paper, which is going to be consulted. And then after it's consulted, um, they will um, incorporate inputs that, and then after that's when they will draft the bill. So um, the, 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 the bill is not going to be submitted in May. I wanted no. them to clarify meanwhile we are here. No, I, I heard it very well. DG. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you. I heard it very well. Um, let me get hands from honorable members. Honorable Mobo, honorable uh, Boni, honorable uh, Masiko, In that order. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. And thank you to the South African Law Reform Commission for the presentation and also for the work that they've done on this development of the disability bill. Chairperson, mine I just is just on the consultation part. So I just want to find out or confirm with the South African Law Reform Commission if they the organizations that they've consulted with are uh, from the disability sector. And uh, if going forward, they will also be consulting uh, organizations from the disability sector because there is also another challenge that uh, persons with disability uh, tend to face. Uh, they always raise the concern that they are usually not consulted or even if they are consultations, there are always barriers. So I just wanted to check if they prioritize organizations from the disability. Thanks. Thank you very much, Robin Oba. Uh, Honorable Pony. Thank you, Chairperson, and good afternoon, uh, honorable members on the platform and the guests also as well. Mine also will be similar, Chairperson. With, let me start by saying uh, we appreciate and welcome the report as presented to us by the Commission. And uh, mine will be similar to what the previous speaker just highlighted, the issue on the consultations. 
in terms of where the, the, the report or the slide is not telling where and which organization to be specific, whether it was in one province or they managed to cover so many provinces, we are not sure. So if that can be maybe clarified. And then what I liked on slide, there's a slide, uh, I think it's slide 24, where they are talking to, uh, uh, it mentions there the, the the illnesses, dementia, and one of them that they are highlighting, which I think is very important, abuse of the elderly and those suffering with dementia. I think on that part, it's just not just about reporting a way of uh, awareness raising, particular on the uh, uh, dementia, because it's one of the illnesses that uh, maybe growing up, many did not understand and many elderly people suffer through that. And uh, it seems like there is a lack or a challenge in terms of caring for people on suffering of, for, from that particular illness. So I think it's, it's very good that it's highlighted on the presentation, and but also needs a way of uh, uh, awareness to empower and educate us as communities, as people looking after us, elderly people, how to deal with this disease because it's there and it's real. The other one, uh, other point, uh, slide, I think slide 36, if I'm correct, that talks to possible solutions. Uh, there's a part that talks to establishing a number of bodies to deal with these issues of uh, persons with disabilities. But I want to also to say to the commission that uh, it is important that we, as much as we want uh, this matter to be given the necessary attention and be highlighted, it's important also not to, to uh, actually to avoid silos because the number of commission or agencies or whatever that will be established might cause problems in terms of uh, everyone wanting to do their own thing. But we need to rather work towards mainstreaming as one of the slides was talking, mainstreaming uh, issues of disability, including gender and so on. So as we do that, it needs to be uh, uh, avoided by, at all costs. Because already in, there are you, the H, Human Rights uh, Commission and other CGEs and others that can assist in that regard. But to add and have many, many that tomorrow we will not have control over might call, pose a challenge. And then uh, the, still on that very same slide that talks to specific legislation to be uh, 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 put in place. I think as we do that, we need also to guard against duplicating uh, because already we have uh, acts like your Labor Relations Act, EEA, and then including the Human Rights uh, Commission that talks to that we have been utilizing as legislation and assisting in terms of uh, dealing with issues that talks to discrimination and all including the constitution. So we need to really guard against also duplicating what we currently have. Rather we, we take from where we have benchmarked, where we have done research or studies and see what is it that we have as a country and make sure that we incorporate, but to duplicate might be also a problem. So basically that was all from my side chair, but we appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Boni. Uh, Tanya? There's a, a, a question on the screen. Uh, uh, let me just see. Yeah, it's asking uh, how long consultation usually takes. Do you have any idea? Let me just make a note of it. How long consultation take? Okay, um, I can't see this on the screen. I'm not able to go back to the screen, but may I start answering the questions? Yeah, yeah, you must start. Uh, you want me to repeat this? The uh, question that I, it, it says how long does consultation normally take? The yeah, last question. Uh, do you have any idea? Maybe this person wants to, your, your time. So how long will your consultation take? Okay, um, I've got to that. Now, the, the first uh, person uh, on terms of the consultation part, uh, if uh, what if organizations sorry, from Tanya. sorry, sorry, there's honorable Masiko, yeah, yeah, thank sorry, you, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chairperson. I, I, I am actually covered by um, the, the previous uh, two colleagues. And just to also substantiate, um, Honorable Chairperson, the issue of, um, uh, on the issue of consultation, one is interested in relation to the diversity you know, uh, of, 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 of uh, 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 persons with disabilities coming from diverse groups. And you, have, you see that most of the time, those with uh, probably mental disabilities are not usually represented in civil society engagement sessions where consultation is actually taking place. So I'm just checking in terms of, yes, how long will the consultation take? But over and above that, have we accommodated the, the different diverse disabilities that our persons with disabilities are, 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 are faced with so that we are able to ensure that when we are consulting within the process itself, we are leaving no person behind in terms of accommodating all the forms of disabilities in, in, in the engagement sessions. When chairperson, we've been going to sessions, you know, during our constituency period, you will find that always the, 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 the organizations that are represented during the period you know, of, of consultation, those that are dealing with persons with disabilities uh, are normally you know, um, probably physical disabilities, but they are still able to, 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 to move around. But you have those groups you know, uh, that, that, that really are, are limited to places of residences or places of you know homes are we able are we going to be able to go to that extent in terms of consulting and not only leave it to the presence or, or the physical presence of organizations that we are able to interact with easily and leave those that are, are quite complicated behind thank you honorable chair thank you very much honorable masiko i see there's a hand of mbusi in zimande i don't know whether mbusi is an honorable member or a commissioner Not, no thanks chair i'm a member of uh, disabled people as organization just to check our status in this meeting chair whether we are allowed to engage or it's on observatory so uh, maybe before i continue let me get that clarity first chair Okay, uh, 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 Mbusi, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, guests and not uh, and organizations and not public, organ uh, uh, the public guests, NPOs and uh, civil society organizations for today, you are not allowed to participate. It's only members of the portfolio committee and the a law reform commission, the department, and uh, the other guests uh, that you have invited uh, to come and account. Uh, so uh, for today, you are not allowed to participate. Thank you very much. Uh, there will be a time where you will be allowed to participate when we are calling for public participation. But if there's any issue that you want to raise with uh, us as the portfolio committee, you can write directly to, to myself as the chair of the portfolio committee, and then I will then send it uh, on behalf of the committee to the relevant, whether it's the department or the law reform commission. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Tanya. Uh, Bonnie, uh, you, you forgot to lower your hand or what? No, let me know what you sorry. Okay, uh, over to you, Tanya. Thank you. I'm going to start with the first question. The consultations, whether um, if organizations are from, this, um, are all the organizations from different disabilities going to be involved and what are the barriers? Um, we intend to consult as wide as possible. Um, anybody that needs to be, okay. What I'm good. Other members of <laughs> other commissioners can also respond. Tanya, don't worry, don't stress. Other commissioners <laughs> can also uh, respond. Mr. Okay. Tivali, she can okay. also respond. In terms of consultation, nobody's left behind. So we try to consult as wide as possible. 
Um, we last time we could only do the virtual meetings. We could possibly do physical meetings. We still have to confirm that, but no organization uh, is left out. No type of disability is left out. Um, we have, in terms of barriers, uh, obviously that will be one, data will be one of those issues. Um, we have to look at it if that's going to be, uh, meetings is going to be virtual. Uh, which organizations we consult, consulted, uh, the second question, and where and with whom. We, um, I tried to uh, put it as wide as possible. We used a list um, with names and contact details of all disability organizations. The list was uh, obtained on the internet from UNISA. Uh, I've also tried to use the different departmental uh, departments, the contact list on the internet for that. Um, we've also worked through the Department of Women, Youth, Persons with Disabilities with the various uh, national and provincial um, national disability rights mechanism structures. We had engagements with the Presidential Working Group. We had engagement with students. Um, yeah, so um, we've engaged with um, like different organizations. We've engaged with, we try to spread it as wide as possible and see what we could get back. In terms of, uh, like I said, the engagements was, was on the 29th, 30th of March, and then the 16th of April in 2021, and then the 12th, 19th, 26th, 13th, 20th, 28th of May, and then the 8th of June, there was uh, virtual consultations. Uh, in terms of dementia, um, uh, I noted what the speaker said. In terms of the possible solutions, um, we had a brief meeting with the Human Rights Commission on this issue, what they are doing uh, on this issue. And then um, we are mindful not to, to duplicate, uh, to see what's already existing and build from there. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. And then in terms of how long consultations will take, once the, um, the discussion paper is published, we will then uh, obviously develop a plan, which we haven't done yet, but like I said, uh, it could contain uh, physical meetings, which depends on COVID and the budget. And then we also need to look at virtual meetings, uh, if that's still necessary. Um, I cannot give you a time frame or who will we consult with at this stage. Um, obviously, it will be as wide as possible. And then, yeah, we do make reasonable accommodation in terms of Sign, a sign language in um, Braille. And uh, what, what other question did I miss? <clears throat> uh, was that all the questions? Sorry, Tanya. Yes, uh, did I uh, answer all your questions? I, I see Dylan Clark. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair. And I, I'm with, with uh, Tanya, and I think that she's um, responded adequately. There's just one thing I would like to add, if I may, that the publication of the, of the discussion paper is envisaged at the, um, at the very latest in June of this year, when it would go to the commission meeting, if not before. Once publication has taken place, we usually have a period of three months in which to do consultation. So perhaps that will just give a framework um, in terms of which our planning will have to take place. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Tanya, I don't know whether you have responded to the questions that were raised by Honorable Boni. Which would that uh, be? Uh, I see there's Andrew Udakwashe. Yes. And uh, I see there's Puti. Can I give Andrew? Yes. Uh, just tell Andrew. me which questions I still need to address. Okay, let me hear them first. Andrew? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair and uh, members of the Portfolio Committee. I realize that uh, time is running and uh, you have other commitments. And I just thought I should briefly uh, relate to this topic uh, that we are discussing. Although I am on the advisory committee of the Law Reform Commission, I am speaking on behalf of uh, the Presidential Working Group. Now, we, we, would like to we would like to confirm that 
all the consultations uh, that Tanya referred to, uh, uh, we were also involved uh, and we participated as the presidential working group. I guess one of the things that came up and uh, that we need to highlight is um, number one, the need to uh, see whether we can use the African Disability Protocol and the Marrakesh Treaty. You may recall that uh, the Marrakesh Treaty relates to the cop copyright uh, issues uh, for people with visual mm -hmm. impairment. Those are some of the issues that we discussed uh, in the presidential working group. And then with regards to the disability bill, uh, we are already contemplating what sort of contents are going to be, uh, the content that is going to be included uh, in the bill and ultimately in the act. And there is need to uh, really capacitate uh, the, all the organizations of persons with disabilities at all levels, because although they want to participate, but they have no capacity to do that. Capacity in terms of human resources and funding. And uh, the issue of communication has already been uh, outlined. And the presidential working group itself does not have capacity as well to perform its functions. So we may need to look at issues that relate to budgets and also making sure that uh, the departments, which is our key role, that each department uh, is assisted to set objectives, targets, and fiscal allocations, so that when the act is eventually uh, passed, they will be able to, uh, to implement. Uh, then, Chair, you, you also had another question, uh, which, uh, which, which was, what can we do? Uh, what, uh, you know, how can we uh, be assisted? Uh, now, here, we, we felt that as a presidential working group, that is, there is an urgent need to provide resources for the work and operations of the presidential working group and the portfolio committee. Uh, and we felt that uh, the strategic plans that are, are, are being developed now should be adequately resourced. Our gender rights should be particularly uh, included because even within and among ourselves, uh, we are having problems with that. Our secretariat in the department uh, has no resources. Um, and then as the presidential working group, we must give you feedback uh, regularly as the portfolio committee from the point of view uh, of the presidential working group, what are things happening? Where, you know, how best can we resolve any matters that we encounter? We probably need um, a program that we can uh, contribute our skills and expertise to ensure that the portfolio committee has support and resources, uh, similar to what you used to have in the past, uh, which was called the legislative support program. I think some of you might remember it. Now, at the moment, it doesn't help to communicate it to work with structures that are not properly resourced. So we feel that uh, the portfolio committee should be resourced so that it can do its work, but also influence uh, other portfolio committees to ensure that the disability agenda uh, is put uh, on the table. And lastly, um, some of the practices that government implements are in themselves a barrier. I am I'm here sitting with a, a, an advert from the city of Swane, uh, up publicizing work uh, in the expanded public works program. Their recruitment practice, they call it the lottery system, where they throw God knows what dice are thrown in the sky or some mechanism that is um, uh, used to, uh, to recruit people. Now, that excludes persons with disabilities because you know how hard it is to win a lottery. Now, so some of these practices, although they are well-intentioned, they then lead to the failure to meet disability targets. I have cited the expanded public works program particularly uh, because we have just done a massive research on it and we found that one of the reasons why they are failing um, are things that have to do with their recruitment practice. So you see, the portfolio committee must be aware on what research is here and what is the research saying and what are all the government departments saying about disability and also how can you be assisted as members of parliament to better represent uh, the needs of persons with disability? Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andrew. Um, we have noted all the things that you just uh, presented now before the portfolio committee and uh, um, uh, 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 I think uh, your, your, your issues are important. Uh, uh, who was next? Uh, Mr. Divan? Yes, thank you very much, Chair. I think I was covered by Mr. Dubé, but perhaps I can just add two brief points. Um, the, the first is the issue of whether there's not a danger of duplication and um, institutions working in silos if we have a self-standing disability bill um, in addition to all the other legislation uh, dealing with discrimination, Papuda and so on. I think this is one of the key issues that is being addressed by the advisory committee and Ms. Prinsler at the moment. Um, and in that regard, let, let me perhaps just clarify, I think it was it was dealt with by Ms. Prinsler, but the next paper that's coming out, although it's called a discussion paper, it is in fact a position paper um, in, in the sense that it's going to give prima facie guidance on these aspects, which, which is then discussed. The, the previous paper, the, the, the issue paper, was just to stimulate discussion and the Law Commission didn't take a stance or didn't promote any particular approach in that paper. This will now follow, of course, not a final position that will only be taken after the discussion document is, is discussed and debated. But this issue must be addressed in um, the, the the discussion paper, backslash position paper that's going to come out now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Tivan. Uh, is there any other hand, honorable members? Uh, Bonnie, are your questions being answered? No, I'll cover, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Masiko? Honorable Masiko, are your questions covered? Honorable Ngobo, are your questions covered? Yes, yes, they've been covered, thanks. Puti? IT, don't sabotage me by closing my 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 place. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, I, I wanted to come in in terms of the consultations, Chair, because uh, it's linked to the question that was earlier asked, I think, by Honourable Member Sharif, when she was asking that we submitted a, a draft consultation plan. Uh, indeed, it is true, Chair. Uh, it is a draft consultation plan for the discussion paper. Hence, I indicated when I presented earlier on to say that the documents that we submitted in terms of the awareness and the consultation plan are actually work in progress documents, especially because the discussion paper is only going to be available in May 2022. And when we do the consultations that uh, Tanya and uh, Darlene were talking to, we work with, with the South African Law Reform Commission. In actual fact, uh, for them to be able to reach widely uh, the disability sector, it's because we will have uh, ensured that working with the presidential working group, we reach the, the, the disability sector. It's a draft specifically because we still have to address whether we're going to go physical or virtual. That is why it did not have time frames. And, and normally we give the consultations about three to four months, but we are normally advised also by the South African Law Reform Commission in terms of their deadlines to receiving inputs. Uh, the same process we followed when we did the issue paper. We developed a project plan with the 
uh, South African Law Reform Commission and the Presidential Working Group. And also uh, uh, with, the with the discussion paper, we'll follow the same process. Uh, hopefully, if we're physical, then the plan that, that on the draft plan where we, we want to reach provinces physically, uh, working with the municipalities on the ground, the, uh, and the and the offices of the premier and provinces will will then come to fruition. Okay. So okay. with the issue paper, we got limited by the the virtual nature of the consultations. But we we tried as much as we can to reach indeed the diverse population and also the different disabilities. So I just wanted to, to, to clarify that one. Uh, yes. Please and close your mic, uh, mute yourself. I don't know who is uh, interrupting uh, Honorable Bonnie, but it's a voice of a man. Please mute your mic. Okay. And um, lastly, on the timeline, yeah, the timelines again on the operational plan, as I indicated, it's a work in progress, it's a draft. Uh, Honorable Chair, when we presented the the, the, the AU protocol in the last meeting, you, you even indicated that for the first quarter, we indicated that we're going to design an awareness raising uh, program. So we're just in that uh, document indicating what are the areas that we're going to deal with in depth in terms of uh, this particular operational plan. But uh, as we report quarterly to the portfolio committee, we'll definitely be giving more information and pro and and uh, and, and um, uh, uh, reporting on on even the 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 the, op, the 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 awareness raising plan that will have been adopted by all, including in consultation with the sector. Thank you, Chair. Thank thank you very much, uh, 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 Puti. Um, you were responding to the outstanding questions. Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, especially because they are tied into so also me, the process of the discussion. So please paper. mute your mic. Alert from mute examine to everyone. Chair, can we only be excused? So me, please mute your mic. Hold it for Zoom meeting. Mute. Currently unmuted. So me, it's it's. Oba niga ntlongo bako pale to me. Yeah, can I mute your mic? Yes, our apologies, uh, uh, Chair. It's I think it's the software he's using that talks back to him when you, when we are speaking, so it's probably just uh, 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 make uh, disturb us a bit. Thanks, Marlene. You were saying what? Hi, Chair. I just want to reiterate, Chair. Sorry, I don't have a uh, um, hand to raise, Chair is just to reiterate, Chair, that the department must look at the monetary in evaluation, that everything is going across the board when it comes to the consultation, Chair. So that's extremely important. And sometimes, Chair, is the compliance also that when we need to get interpreters as well, then there is the compliance issues of budgets and how the supply chain management also kicks in, Chair. That is that's also when it comes to budgeting as well, Chair. So when we're going to look at the consultation, Chair, it's the rural areas that is also important, Chair. That's transport, all of those logistics. And so just once again, Chair, across all ministerial levels, and I really like with local government, but really on the ground is of utmost importance. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Marlene. Uh, unfortunate that uh, put it. Did you? Yes, chair. <laughs> um, yes, can chair. you please uh, uh, respond to uh, make? I think you were cut, chairperson. Um, is the chairperson kicked out? Uh, 
it looks like a uh, hair picture is frozen. I think she's 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 Honorable kicked out. Members, it seems as though the chairperson has been kicked out of the meeting. Um, uh, Nelisha, what is the next item on the agenda, or were you going to present something, Honorable FDG? She was saying we should respond. I was trying to listen to what is it that she wanted us to 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 respond to, but I'm thinking maybe is the last speaker who was talking about the budgets. And I thought Kuti had responded to that because uh, when the Law Reform Commission advertised the, the, the um, issue paper, it was the department that uh, uh, worked with, the, with all the, the uh, disability sectors uh, to consult. Uh, we consulted, we provided the interpretation, your translations and all those. So I'm not sure uh, um, um, what was the last person saying when, when uh, she said, we, we should provide the budgets because we already provide the budgets. But I think, I thought she's saying that, that even the, the municipalities and the others must also uh, chip in. I think that's what I, I heard. But I don't know, maybe Puti can respond if there's something that she said, Puti. Yes, thanks, DG. Uh, she, I think she's mentioning that the, what is critical with the consultations, especially if they're going to be physical, is to ensure that uh, yeah, the different role players also uh, uh, put in reasonable accommodation measures so that uh, we're able to accommodate everyone. Uh, with some of the consultations that we had on the issue paper, uh, there were some challenges here and there, but where we funded the consultations, uh, the reasonable accommodation needs were accommodated. We just we only had challenges with some platforms, virtual platforms, but but we managed to to get through. So yeah, she's indicating it's about uh, making sure that the uh, reasonable accommodation needs are accommodated when we go for the discussion paper. Thanks. Thank you, Puti. And uh, Chair, I think um, uh, the Law Reform Commission had requested to be accommodated because um, 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 the advocate wanted to leave. But the main reason we are here was for the portfolio committee to finalize the issue of the ratification of the protocol. Uh, which, as far as I'm concerned, is not dependent on this legislation because the legislation is domesticating. At the moment, it's about uh, ratification. So I, I think um, that is where the discussion was going to. And but just to to report that the last year, last week, after the portfolio committee, we were called by the select committee. We presented and they have approved uh, uh, that the. The, 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 the bill um, uh, be presented at the NCOP for approval for ratification. Uh, thank you very much, DG. I see that the hand of uh, Andrew is up. Maybe let us, let us take that hand as the last comment, uh, honorable members. We only have eight minutes left from this meeting. I think we will need to go back to the first suggestion that the chairperson had that maybe we adjourn the meeting at uh, four o'clock or maybe four, five minutes to four and then reconvene after the um, ANC caucus meeting, which is due to start at four o'clock. I'll then recognize Andrew to come in. I see that your hand is up. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I think the presidential working group would like okay. to recommend that um, uh, the portfolio committee should really push for the adoption of the Africa Disability Protocol. Um, now, so far, you may want to know that uh, three countries have already adopted. Uh, that is uh, Rwanda, Kenya, and uh, Mali. And, and uh, 11 countries have signed, including South Africa. And we, we need our country to also uh, ratify the protocol so that we can move as quickly as possible uh, towards the 15 countries that are required uh, to make um, uh, the protocol uh, binding. And then also to say that um, we should not lose sight of the support that we can request uh, from the Pan-Africa Parliament, which is here um, in Midrand, uh, the model disability law that they adopted, 
on 19th October 2019 uh, may also be used to amplify uh, the articles of the protocol. Um, then, uh, and lastly, uh, to say that um, we, we have to emphasize the need to ensure that uh, the dis all organizations of persons with disabilities at national, uh, provincial, local, and particularly district level should be included uh, in the consultation and drafting process of the disability bill. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Masiko. Uh, I was informed by the researcher that uh, Mr. Andrew was the last uh, 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 speaker. Uh, I'm sure, honorable members, we have satisfied yourselves with the, the issues that were raised in our previous meeting, which we said before we adopt the, the report, uh, let the department go and uh, uh, deal with the issues that we have raised, which they came back and presented today, and uh, you are satisfied. Can I get hands? of honorable members, uh, if you are satisfied uh, in the manner which the department has responded and what was presented also by the law reform uh, commission so that we can be able to then table the report of this protocol to the, to, to the house. Can I get hands from honorable members? And his bone is under the Pelia Fisal and Tanya Bone business cut. I have a problem with my budget freezing, but uh, I can't put my hand up. I'd like to be recognized. Oh, okay. Honorable Masiko? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I, I fully support that uh, we move in terms of uh, adopting the report. So I therefore propose that the portfolio committee adopts the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Masiko. I see the hand of Honorable Masondo. Thank you, Chairperson. Afternoon, Honorable Members and Officials. I second the adoption of the report. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Masondo, for the secondment of the adoption of the report. Uh, is there any other member who's... Uh, not agreeing with the portfolio committee. None. Okay. They then uh, we uh, the report has been duly adopted by the portfolio committee. Will then uh, take the uh, the report to the house and for for the adoption. Uh, I think. Uh, this was uh, the main reason why we convened today and the report is duly adopted by the portfolio committee. And uh, I want, I think this was the, the only item I need, uh, Nelisa. We, we have mid, uh, minutes, Chair, last week's minutes. No, let's okay. minutes can adopt them later. Uh, but uh, I want to thank, uh, all the guests, uh, the Law Reform Commission and the Disability Committee, the Presidential uh, Disability Committee uh, and the, the department for honoring our invitation today. Uh, we are looking forward to hear from you. Uh, I'm sure we'll invite you again. And uh, we are looking forward to your uh, uh, your next uh, consultation that you'll be doing, uh, especially to the Law Reform Commission, uh, the ones that you'll be doing in May, uh, so that uh, our honorable members can be uh, able to inform their constituencies and other uh, organizations that they have in their constituencies to participate in those consultations. But thank you very much for for all the report that you've presented to us 
and the meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you, Che. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Che. Thank you, Che. Everything. Thank you, Che. Goodbye. Thank you, Che. Thank you very much. Bye.